Hi guys, welcome back. So it's Lions leaderboard time following that game versus Japan. But first of all, a few bits of big news. As you guys already know, Alwyn Jones out of the tour, Tiprick out of the tour. The big problem there, of course, is they have to replace two players and the captain. A massive blow for those guys. Feel really sorry for them. Uh, what a shame. Um, they have managed to act quickly though, so they don't go out to South Africa so they can get these guys in quick. So I guess that's one slight positive. A little bit surprising, the second row replacement, not Johnny Gray, not James Ryan. I mean, wow, I mean, they've already had a slap in the face not being selected first time. Now it's a kick in the groin. But, I mean, I guess it's kind of logical in a way as he's gone for size again. He picked Johnny Hill a bit out of the blue for his frame, for his height, for his size. Beard is huge. However, Halloween Jones isn't huge. He's a workhorse, and you think Gray or Ryan would fit that like-for-like -like replacement better. Either way, he's gone for Beard. Um, let's see how he goes. Let me know if you think that's the right call. And then on the flank, he's gone for a favourite of his, Josh Navidi. I think it's a good decision, actually. Super physical and can play six, seven, and eight. I think it's a, a nice one to slot in. Even if he, even if he doesn't play the test matches, he can you know cover a lot of positions to be incredibly useful. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of those two replacements and the captain, Connor Murray. Now, I think it was really between him and Ken Owens at this late stage. I think he needed someone experienced and. Murray's very experienced and experienced with the Lions, so I'm very happy with that, really. And we know scrum half isn't our strongest position, but he probably is our number one. He had a good game versus Japan. I'm happy him being the number one, the captain, but he does need to be backed up by other senior players, the likes of Owens, Henderson, Bigger, Farrell. He'll need some support. Maybe that might even work, you know, in a bit of a positive way for the Lions. Backs against the wall. We all need to pitch in that little bit more. Let me know what you think on the captain's choice. Now onto the leaderboard. At the top, you'll see that test spot, the one that everyone wants. And at the bottom, in the stands, watching those test matches. Who moved up? Who have moved down? Following this Japan game, let's have a look. So, first of all, you can see I've shunted Sutherland and Wynne Jones slightly upwards. My very complicated scientific method is they either go slightly up or down, moderately, or a big way up or down. It's all very subjective, bit of fun, but I'd really like to know what you guys think. And it's mainly for me trying to sort out in my head who I think is in pole position for the test spots. Sutherland I thought was good, solid, maybe not his best game, but definitely nothing wrong. Same with Wynne Jones when he came on. I thought he made some good impact, some good touches in open play. I think both are kind of a, a no-score draw for those two. Both move up slightly just for having played with a solid start. Now, hookers. Obviously, we've got Owens, we've got George. Cowan Dickey is going to be in South Africa, but he is currently concussed following his, well, the epic um, final of the Premiership, which they just lost to Harlequins. But anyway, he is going... Owen starts, George comes on. Um, so again, another no-score draw for them. Owens, I thought, was solid, decent set piece. Didn't look the quickest round the pitch, but did everything he was meant to do. I think he'll get better. George came on, ran around, around a lot, tried really hard, looked very fit, but didn't really manage to do anything truly impressive. So both move up slightly. With the tight heads, we've got Furlong there. You'll certainly have seen his huge bullocking run, pumping his legs, fighting for those extra inches. That's what he's well known for. Scrummaged well, got the edge in the scrum a couple of times without being like massively dominant, but it was a good performance for him. Definitely saying I could start all day long. So moderate race for him, but also I've gone for a moderate race for Sinclair as well, who to be fair, I thought when he came off the bench, he was excellent. Big carries, huge hits, good skills. It looked like a possible test combo with Furlong starting and that, that sort of impact from Sinclair from the bench I think would be spot on, to be honest. So those two, big tick for them. Uh, Fagerson will be desperate to get on the pitch after having seen those tight heads, which we thought was going to be a strong point of the Lions squad, and I think it is. Um, second rows. Now, Alwyn Jones, he drops out. You'll see there... Bam, Alwyn Jones drops out, and we've got a Beard in uh, to replace him. But Henderson started, 
steady to pack, very tidy, good basics, not spectacular, but just showed he could easily be a starter, call the lineouts, all that sort of thing. So I think he moderately goes up. And I was really impressed with Laws actually. One city penalty, that is true, but he was a go to line out option, rose super high in the line out, good carry, some big hits in defence as well. Should have scored, but just fumbled the ball. Could be an ideal test sub actually to come on in the second row as an impact or you know an emergency back row as well. So both of those push up moderately, I think, really push their course forward well. Looking at the flankers, at the moment we've got Tipperick in there. Obviously, he's going to be dropping out on the next page. Byrne, I thought he really tried hard. You know, he was everywhere. He did make a fair few errors, but you could see what he was trying to do. Get a go about the pitch, do a bit of everything, line out, carry, handling. And we saw the pace for his try was fantastic, but he wanted a tidier game. So I think a moderate race for Tyg Byrne and Navidi coming into there, starting off level with everyone else. The number eight, Porro Talupe Falatau had to come on, play out of position on the flank, mainly at seven. Um, and he had a bit of an average game anyway. Um, but I let him off a little bit because he was out of position, but no game for him at the moment. However, I will push up Conan. I thought a bit of a mixed bag, made some errors, but again, trying the right things out wide. Plenty of eye catching stuff as well. So a slight race for him. Thought he did fine, but you know, he want to do a little bit better. But he's in the tour now. Scrum half wise, Murray, the new captain, looked commanding to me. Did make some few errors, but I thought his passing looked crisp. I liked his running game. He set some people up, looked commanding. Kicking was a bit of a mixed bag. Price came on, and to be honest, it coincided with Japan playing well. Um, the line's going down to 14. Plus, I didn't think he played that great with the tempo of the game either. So, a bit of a, a no movement for Price. He'll need a start to really make his case, I think. Right, fly half wise. Dan Bigger started, and as far as auditions go, to be a test fly half, couldn't have gone much better. Kicking out of hand, excellent. Kicking at goal, excellent. I love the way how positive he was and looked to inject pace and urgency in the attack at all times. Looked a leader without being petulant. Would do it the little damn bigger things like calling out that the T's on for the Japanese so they can't uh, make any decision apart from kick at goal. But without being over the top petulance, I liked what I saw. Farrell did come on at 12. So sorry, bigger moves up a big amount. And I thought that was a huge step forward for him. Farrell comes on at 12, which is interesting, but nothing really happened for him. He didn't have much opportunity to do anything good or anything bad. So a bit of a no gain for Farrell. Be interesting to see if he starts 10 or 12 next game. Let me know what you think he should do. The centres, Aki Henshaw, work together great. Aki starts with a missed tackle, but then he's all power and also control. Good tackles, but a massive carry for Adam's try was the standout. And if Gatlin wants power, he wants Aki. Simple as that. Maybe he's not the most skillful, but what he can do well is what he did in that game against Japan. So he definitely moves up moderately. And Henshaw does as well. He was all action all over the place. Bit of everything. Some big hits in defence. Um, Physically, I think when he runs into traffic, he's not as effective, uh, but certainly very comfortable playing with Aki. If that's the test pairing, I think that would be absolutely fine. Finally, the back three. Duan van der Merwe showed loads of confidence, did exactly what he does for Scotland and pops up all over the place. I mean, the vision to score on the right when he'd already made a big run on his original left wing was brilliant, made a lot of good ground, looks dangerous. Definitely got caught out a couple of times in defence, once a little bit suspectly, but then the whole Lions team did. So just reserving judgment on that, but for the danger, the work rate he offers, uh, he goes up a moderate amount for me. And here's the rest. So uh, Van der Merwe going up a moderate amount. The other's going up a slight amount. Adams, really good finish for his try. Good power in defence as well, but went a little bit AWOL in defence at times, a little bit uh, frantic. So just a slight improvement for him. Williams, I thought, was very solid. Good positioning fullback wise I wanted to see a bit more edge in attack, potentially, from him. When Watson went on to fullback, I thought he looked very busy, very quick, very sharp, but we didn't see him for, for a massive amount of time. So he goes up a slight amount as well. So all to play for in that back three. Anyway, guys, 
Let me know your thoughts on the Lions leaderboard. Who should have gone up more or down more? Love to know what you think the pecking order is and what should happen next game as well. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you next time.